Good afternoon. <laughs> I can't hear you, boys and girls. Good afternoon. So there's a kind of heavy post-lunch feeling now. Everyone wants a little bit of a nap, presumably. Would that be OK? I don't see why not, actually. Should I just let everyone have a nap? But I've been asked to do this session. We called it Humans at Work. The theme is kind of collaboration. And I've been guilty of running workshops about collaboration. How can people work together better? How can teams work better together? And I knew that collaboration isn't just a thing. It's not a uniform notion. So I did a bit of research, and I found there's a guy in Stanford who says collaboration is wrong for many activities. How do you feel about that? Working together feels like a humanist, marvelous thing. And then actually, we look at it more closely. It may not always work for certain things. There's two people leaving already, upset by my, <laughs> <laughs> my, my words. Where should ladies who are going out there? Are they just going to the back? Maybe they, ha maybe they want to sleep. And are those more snoozy, those seats? Lady over there. Hello, why didn't you want to sit here? There's lots of nice people here. Anyway, <laughs> who was a bit scared by Dan McQuillan's poem? How much are we giving away? So I, I have got Alexa in my house, and I turn it off. But is that enough? Should I, should I sort of take off the, uh, the, the plug from the wall socket? So I'm sort of toying these days with a thing. I'm um, artificial intelligence versus emotional intelligence. Does everyone near here know what art emotional intelligence is? Because I was having a very long meeting with some people recently at our top lawyers in London, and I said, we're talking about EQ and IQ. And then this person, about 50 minutes in, I, I don't know what EQ is. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, EQ is the shorthand for emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the thing whereby you understand how you feel, how the other person might feel, how you're having an effect, how she's having an effect on you very roughly speaking, but a man wrote a book about it and made a lot of money from it. <laughs> but it's one of those things that's become a shorthand. We don't always know what it means, how it applies, and I was asked to write a book about soft skills. I put that on Twitter and say, how do we feel about soft skills? What do you think happened? Lots of people said soft skills bad uh, because they didn't like those two words. Many of us who are in the world of leadership development, communication training, soft skills sounds like it's undermining what really is going on. It's not really extending what the truth of what our job is. And somebody else said it's a very misogynist term as well. So some people are decried because oh, their soft skills are lacking somehow. That's why they won't get promotion. So in the end, we called it seven steps to improve your people skills. And the poor bookstore guy over there said, please, will you mention your book? You're mentioning everyone else's. So there it is. Uh, seven steps to improve your people skills, you can buy it now. But I managed to get them all down to se seven chapters, each beginning with L. And I come from the world of improv. Has anyone ever seen an improvised theater show? Okay, quite a lot of you. Some of you might be thinking, I don't know what that means. Isn't all comedy improvised? Stand-up comedy, no. I don't do stand-up comedy that's quite lonely. It's one person on her own, his own. I do group comedy, group improv, and I've done it on this very stage with the comedy store players and with Eddie Izzard and a couple of others in a show called One Word Improv. But I've been looking again at what a collaboration means. Some people think it means or feel it means or are scared that it means more meetings. Who likes meetings? <laughs> and it's one of those things where working together, the shadow side of it is, sounds like I've got to give up some control I do all the work and you get all the kudos. It's going to delay me getting with what I really think. I've got to compromise. So I, I've looked at a few things about collaboration. I wrote them down. That's why I'm going over here now. <laughs> we, uh, the, the, the worrying side of robots, artificial intelligence, is what we saw with Dan, but also soon will they become our masters and we're their servants. We have been collaborating for quite a while with artificial intelligence, haven't we? Uh, we haven't had machine learning, but we've had phones and computers and stuff. Didn't you like the words, Dan, I don't know if you invented them or I just hadn't heard them before, machinic, technicity, precarity? I loved those words. I'm going to steal them a lot now. 
But the idea of artificial intelligence versus emotional intelligence. So let's just have a look. Can we have a look at, Sean, that list of things? This was from 2016 Davos, uh, the World Economic Forum. They were asked, uh, strategy directors, HR directors were asked, what are the skills that be needed in 2020? And already people are slagging these off for being a bit outdated, because I'm sure you've all been aware that 50%, 15% of jobs now won't exist in 10, five years time. And what will we need to do? So look at those. Which of those do you think doesn't involve an element of people skill or an element of collaboration? Which do you think? Hello? <laughs> Complex problem solving, is that better done on your own? Depends. If it's complex, maybe you need various different people. What about cognitive flexibility? I reckon between nine, everyone's shaking their heads because you've all come here. You're all in my camp, aren't you? The real people out there doing proper jobs might disagree. But actually, I've worked with real people as well. And nine, nine and a half of those might be to do with people or that some sense of collaboration. Because even if you do solve the problem, number one, you've got to explain it to other people. You've got to help them understand why it's a good idea. Just coming in now. Oh, it's Andrew from the crew. Hello. Well, what was the last one? Oh, sorry, sorry. Cognitive flexibility. Like any good workshop facilitator, I now ask the rest of the audience, <laughs> what do you think cognitive flexibility means? Yoga for the mind. Yoga for the mind. That sounds a bit deep. <laughs> Presumably it means you'd be able to change your mind in light of different data. Do you, does anyone have a better definition than that? My son uh, has to do open homework at super his school. No homework all week. You've just got to do a thing, which is an absolute nightmare for the parents. But he's found that learning creativity is applying something you've just learnt alongside something you already knew, perhaps. That's a good definition. But cognitive flexibility, what does that mean? I suppose being able to think differently, see it from a different point of view, perhaps, that certainly is going to be helpful in collaborating, helpful in people skills. OK, so maybe those aren't the skills in 2020. Sean will lose that now. He's just checking his Tinder. Or, is, <laughs> did, or was it Grinder? Did you get my message? <laughs> anyway, so nowadays we have lots of tools for collaboration, don't we? We've got those apps that Sean and I have been checking in on. We've got meetings face-to-face, -face. we've got emails, we've got Yammer, Slack, WhatsApp, Instagram, chatting over coffee, remember that one? Audio conferences, teleconferences. Uh, and so there's lots of tools for collaboration and even sending Google Docs to people, you play your bit, I'll play my bit. But it was interesting, I found a Financial Times survey of what employers want from MBA graduates. What do they want from these people who've come out from that kind of course that Poppy came out of? Things probably have changed, I think, in the last 10 years or so. Since the crash, the, there have been some thinking about what is purpose and business isn't just about the shareholder value. But the three things they were looking for were the ability to work in a team, to be able to work with a wide variety of people, the ability to build, sustain, and expand the network of people. And they're looking for those. Those are the three the three of the top five, not just technical ability. So these things are quite important, aren't they? Now, of course, we talk about collaboration. We all should be singing from the same song sheet. Anyone else got any other cliches we have where we're all pulling together? There's no I in team. Apparently, there are five in individual brilliance. So I come from the world of improv, where it's all about collaborating. I don't know what you're going to say. We work together. It all sounds great. And I was interested to, to, to see that uh, Mario this morning said that uh, positive psychology is hijacked meaning and purpose. Nevertheless, she sort of said, well, maybe there is more in common than we think. Uh, but it was interesting to see that meaning comes and goes. There are ups and downs. And meaning is often to do with the struggle. So maybe that's something that helps us understand meaning isn't going to be an easy thing, straightforward thing. But the kind of flip side of working together, singing from the same song sheet, is groupthink. Anyone think of an example of where groupthink went bad? 
we're laughing, but uh, Enron is one where people couldn't speak out. A lot of the ones that actually Lani had, which is, I don't want to say things in case I upset the boss or upset the team, upset the rhythm. I can't be a whistleblower. I don't want to look like I'm a bad influence. Uh, the Bay of Pigs was a famous disaster for the CIA. Somehow some obvious things hadn't been taken care of because we know about the wisdom of crowds. Does anyone believe in the wisdom of crowds? Lots of evidence that this is a good thing, but actually only if the guesses are independent. Because very easily are we swayed by those around us. What's everyone else doing? I'll, I'll say the same as them. So the herd has a strong power. We don't want to deviate from that. But I found a great study where they looked at people solving a logical problem, which may not be what we come across every day, but this was a logical problem. There was one group that acted independently, one group where they were constantly collaborating what are you doing? How's it getting? What were your solutions? And one, a third group were the ones who were, went off to work on their own but checked in every now and again with the others. They collaborated intermittently, if you like. And what happened was that the individualists reached the optimal solution more often than group two, the constant collaborators. But their average score was worse. And group three, the intermittent collaborators, were the ones who actually did just as well as the individualists, but also had a better average result. So that seems obvious, doesn't it? You all sort of nodded or didn't say anything or were asleep when I said, is there kind of a dynamic sometimes on my own, sometimes working with others? So sometimes we need a bit of space, but we need a bit of occasional collaboration. There's a book, Superminds, by Thomas Malone of Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Three factors determine the collective intelligence of collaborating groups. One is social intelligence, so a bit like emotional intelligence that I talked about, EQ. Uh, how good are we at rating the emotional states of others? Number one, social intelligence. Number two, the extent to which members took part equally in conversations. Does everyone have a voice? And of course, the more equal, the better. Number three, the proportion of women in the group. How do you think that affected their collaborative intelligence? Higher, more women, better. Hurrah. <laughs> we kind of know that. So that social intelligence, the extent to which members are listened to and the proportion of women. Groups ranked highly in these areas cooperated better than others. Uh, however, anyone feel this is okay, but I'm the one who everyone collaborates with and I can never get my work done. What's the shadow side? Because I often work with groups and, I, and they'll say, yeah, we want to be yes and, we don't want to be yes but. Which is the improv ethos, actually. But the uh, Harvard Business Review survey looks at 300 organizations and the distribution of collaborative work was lopsided. Guess what? In most cases, 20 to 35% of the value add from collaborations came from only three to 5% of their employees. I'm sure we know that's roughly true. So some of you get known as the, oh, she, he is a go-to giver. He'll help, she'll help. And it turns out that one single extra miler, as we might call her or him, can drive team performance more than all the other members combined. But this becomes dangerous, because what happens then? We, that, we know that person, he's always prepared to help. She'll help out. We go to her, after a while, there's a bit of a bottleneck. They get busy, everyone's looking at them. Well, we can't go on until she's checked it or she's weighed in, he's had her opinion, his opinion. And so it's interesting how what might become good then might become not so good. So these are the shadows collaboration because I'm, I'm actually gonna write a book about improv called Yes But, which is improv may work on stage and in many cases, but when won't it work? The improv mindset, which is yes and, I hear you, I build on what you say. How can I have a true dialogue with myself about what does that really mean in a day-to-day -day work environment? Because there are three types of collaboration. These ring true to me, certainly. Informational, knowledge, expertise that can be recorded. Hard collaboration, if you like. Informational. Then there's social, kind of awareness, access to others. Let's talk about it, you can, might talk to him, you might talk to her, here's the thing. 
And the third one is personal, that really costs you time and energy, which is, okay, I'll get down and dirty and help you with it. So three types, informational, social, and personal. And what's the one we, 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 we're least willing to give is our own time and energy, but often that turns out to be valuable. And it, often the people who attract collaboration often get overloaded. So there's the phenomenon of the overburdened helper. And of course, after a while, they get too busy, they, they can't help everyone, people get cross. Why can't you help me this time? I'm just being too good a citizen. No deed goes unpunished, as we might say. So I want you now to turn to your neighbor. I know you might have to speak to somebody you've never met before. Ghastly as that sounds. So just talk to her, him, or, or maybe somebody you know well, maybe two or three, whatever. But what does collaboration mean in your work? Some of you are like me, sort of one man, one woman bands. What does it mean in your work? What have you observed in organizations? And what's your collaboration style? That is it information, your expertise, here's the answer, try this, or social, well, let's talk about it, or actually I'm going to try and help you build, solve the problem. So what's your collaboration style? What does it mean in your work? So just let's have some house lights as we discuss that. OK, so the fact you're still talking means the questions were OK. Anybody want to share what collaboration means for them, working together? Does it have some of the meanings I've talked about, some of the applications, some of the fears or delights? Because I've been pretty negative so far. Anyone want to share their insights? It'd be great to hear. The gentleman who said cognitive flexibility, what does that mean? What's your name? Uh, my name's Ian. Hello, Ian. C can you repeat the question? I wasn't really <laughs> The question was, tell me what you just talked about. It really was, what's your collaboration style, and what does collaboration mean at work for you? I'm just wondering, because we're on camera, do you mind standing up? They'll, they'll give you a round of applause, and I'll give you a free pen, Don't. so it's worth it. Okay. Yes. Should, I, should I face this way? Uh, so, uh, my name's Ian, and I work at the Bevy that, was on, here, Ian. that yes. was on the screen before. Yeah. And so, so, so just while I've got the mic, uh, if anybody took a photo of when Jonathan was on the screen, uh, up on the big screen that I forgot to take a photo of, can you swap that with me? That would be really handy. Oh, I thought he was going to say all sorts of GDPR issues there, but no. no it's John it's no. Jonathan cool with this. We, we did GDPR at the bevy. Uh, we had a discussion about it, and then we said, let's not do that. But don't, <laughs> don't tell anybody. But we, somebody told me there was, like, the GDPR team is, like, two people in the UK what, this, to check on You mean everything. there's two civil servants checking? Yeah. So really? when I heard that, I just took that as red and said, let's not do GDPR. So. Well, also... Uh, Break the rules. You know, just <laughs> I heard from a lawyer that a lot of those emails telling you their GDR yep. policy were actually breaking GDRP because <laughs> they, they shouldn't have sent you emails like that. So, so Ian, we're getting right off track. Yes, which is tremendous. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, collaborative style. So, um, uh, Cam and I actually know each other and we collaborate together. So, what's that? Cam? Yes. Cam, and uh, do you and work? My name's Ian. Yes, yeah. I've got that. That's, yeah. yeah. That's go my on. cognitive flexibility, Ian. And so, what does Cam do with you? Uh, so, uh, Cam and I are, we're, we're community business leaders, aren't we? We're oh, both blimey. community business leaders. Is that what you say? At Officially. Yeah. We Hello, did, I'm a community business leader. Yeah, we did a course. Did you? Yeah, we did a course in it. So, so we are. You know, they, we passed right, how long did this course last? Six months. Six, yeah. Frankie Moses. So, yeah. so it was nine was months. It? Oh, right. Ian didn't turn up for most of it. <laughs> yeah. Same attitude to GDPR. Yeah, well, did, those three months were a bit dull. Wasn't listening. <laughs> I'll let Cam do. Were they particularly difficult those three months that Ian didn't bother with, or? No, I did go. I you did, did go, I just but you just forgot, forgot that it was that long. Yeah. Okay, so nine months. Okay, go on then. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and, and and we're trying to collaborate further. So we met on the course, and Cam runs an amazing thing in in London. Do we want to say what it is, Cam? It, yeah. Well, you can say Ian, as you might have. It'll be louder, you, you, won't it? Yeah, go on. Yeah, uh, so, so, we can so, get Cam so, up, actually. Yeah, come on. Cam, Cam works with the most amazing thing called Company Drinks. OK. So I'm sensing Cam doesn't want to come up, so, which is fine. Com so, Company Drinks is an art uh, project that does picking fruit and makes them into cordials and then 
uh, they everyone talks together and they do intergenerational storytelling and um, yeah, all that. All just tell us again. Com what's it called again? Company drinks. Company drinks. Yeah. Fact. So if you ever need have an event and you need cordials for your for your event, <laughs> or beer, or beer, yeah, because they make beer too. Yep. Company yeah. drinks. Company, company so drinks. So for example, there, there's uh, people in East East Bri uh, East London where she works in Barking in Dagenham, and they used to go hot picking in in the post-war years as children, and so they now the same mainly women, yeah, now go picking again and they go gleaning together and they take children with them and they swap stories and they connect. And, and at the end of all that, they also make cordials. Wow. Bloody good idea, oh. isn't it? It's great. I love it. So you're collaborating with company drinks, possibly going to stock their drinks, we would hope. We don't do that, do we? Well, I mean, okay. the bevy, they main, we, we, we mainly drink alcohol uh, a lot. But you, she does yeah. beer. Anyway, let's not talk about uh, yeah. the lack of uh, foresight in her, your her, business. Her friend. poor sales techniques, so, uh, basically. Let's yeah. talk about collaboration, which you were yeah. keen not to talk about. <laughs> so, uh, so we discussed uh, that we had, we had slightly different styles. Uh, Cam feels that she's a social. Uh, so she's a, oh, those two people would fit together well. Let's share values and that kind of stuff. And I am a, uh, what was the third one? Personal. So Where you I, get stuck in and do it yourself. Well, I like, I like to, yeah, sort of help people do things m myself and hopefully not have to do them myself. So I'll get them to do it, is my style. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Has anyone heard of David Ogilvy? He was a kind of leading light, uh, Mad Men is sort of his era, leading advertising guy. And he said, my thing was, I'd always go to a meeting, give everything I could in the meeting, but make sure as I leave, I don't have any to-dos. <laughs> Which is interesting, is a leadership style, isn't it? Completely committed in the meeting, but make sure that the people there are empowered to do it. You might characterize it that way. So you're, you try and help people out. She's more connecting people, maybe that's right. OK, I'll give you a, a Neil Malarkey pen and... Uh, you can have one for Cam as well. There you go. These are, give them a round of applause. Thank you. Okay. So, um, anyone else want to give us an insight into their collaboration technique? There are sort of two chaps here, but maybe we should have a female voice, given that Cam wouldn't give us hers. There were the four, four women here who, are, I, when I came over, you suddenly shut up. Uh, which, you know, I'm used to that. So, do you want to say about your collaborative sort of insights? You look like you're about to speak, so I'm going to give you the mic. They give you a round of applause, and it's great if you stand up, if that's OK. Thank you. I said that my collaborative style was to um, get social with a bottle of wine, and then I felt that that kind of engaged people quite readily. <laughs> OK, so it's kind of uh, off-desk, as we call it. Yes, it's away familiar. from the real normal day-to-day -day of work. It's let's relax because I, I characterized it in my book I think one of those things where when can you tell when somebody's coming for a chat? Is it a quick 30 second? Can you give me the answer? Is it a little five minute? I want to mull or is it we need to get a bottle of wine kind of chat and how many off how many bottles of wine? Do you have a, a week do you think what? <laughs> what's your name by the way Sammy Sammy and what do you do? Um, I create corporate gift boxes with a kind of a conscious theme to them so everything is ethical sustainable but uh, kind of a luxury high-end market okay do you have cordials or beer involved no but i was actually thinking that was quite interesting and i could use those potentially well my, um, gift boxes cam is here <laughs> so company drinks so a bottle of wine you're saying that's kind of more informal it's outside the normal structures of meetings putting meetings in your diary, Outlook, iCal, stuff. Relaxing. Relaxing, but it's a bit different from having to knock heads together at 10 a.m. every Tuesday morning. No, it's the head that bangs in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Dropbox found they, for two weeks a few years ago, they cancelled every recurring meeting to see if those meetings were really needed. And of course, they weren't, many of them. And for the next two years, although they, thank you, Round of applause. Um, what was your name again? Was it Sam? Sammy. Sammy. Uh, and the next two years, they found they had fewer meetings. They were much more efficient, of course. This is the downside of collaboration, is we have to have more meetings. Anyone want to say they have a different collaborative style, or they've found a way to do it, or a little bit like studio time that Amy said. So, some organizations have 
a period when you don't do your job, but you just work on other stuff. Uh, those, if you like, what she called them, the, the cushions, not the couch, if you like. Anyone find that they found things that work from that outside the mainstream type of collaboration? Yes, hello. hello. And you as well, sir, I'll come to you in a moment. Hello, you know the routine, don't you? Oh, stand up. You stand up, they give you a round of applause, I give you a pen, and you say profound things. Okay, so what's, what's your name, by the way? It's Amelia. Amelia. Yes. Uh, I'll stand over there, so you half okay. look at me and half look at them. How about that? Okay, that sounds good. That's good. Um, so I run a mental health charity, and anybody who works in the voluntary sector is probably going to sigh now, but we do co-production, and we have done for years, which is taking very vulnerable people and going, how can we help you have a voice? How can you actually decide how we serve you? Um, and generally what I do is I, I, try and I have to translate information and then I have to step back, but somehow encourage people who've never, ever been able to express themselves to say what they want and need when they've never had a choice. Um, and that can be really difficult. So I usually get cake and tea out and, and, kind of, and a bit of music and get people playing guitars and stuff like that, really. I'm a, basically a massive hippie. <laughs> Co-production, so, yes. so food and drink involved, and somehow to relax people mm -hmm. so they don't feel uneasy in yeah. your can I, presence. Can I have my pen now, please? <laughs> <laughs> yes, do you, know, do you know the gentleman over there, by the way? No, I'll go and give him a thing. Thank you, Amelia, round of applause. So why don't you come down here, and then everyone can see your face, I expect. And what's your name? My name is Amresh. Amresh. Hello, everyone. Can I say it again? I'm Resh. Um, oh, just Resh. I'm Resh. Oh, I'm Resh. Yeah. Sorry. Thank uh, you. You can call me Amy. All right. Why didn't you say that first of all? <laughs> uh, Amy, I like because uh, I'm thinking. I only, I only, only tell it to people who actually love me. Do uh, you love me? Yes. <laughs> okay, you can call I, me Amy. <laughs> well, does your mother call you Amresh if you've been naughty? No, she calls me Amy. Does she? Well. That my wife calls me Amy. Uh, there are a couple of people who call me Amy. Okay. So who calls you Amrish? People who don't love you? Oh, well, corporate people. <laughs> okay, because Amy is such a good name. It's, it's, to me, it sounds like French, a friend. Uh, I don't know. They just call me with love. Right. Everyone's falling in love with you, Amy, now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, Amy, you have, to, you have uh, obviously a, a troubled relationship with your wife and your mother. We've discovered that <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, and with corporates. But what's your style of collaboration? Tell us more. So I was talk, uh, talking to Rosie, and she, she's into frozen foods business. So she said to me that her thought about collaboration is uh, taking care of people who work with her. And I, I, I felt collaboration means more to me. In today's corporate life, you know, you have so many things in your plate to do. So everybody is like crazy busy. So I would say, uh, if I want you to be helpful to me, I should be equally helpful to you. And that's the meaning of collaboration for me. Okay, and how do you help people? Do you say, I'll give you my time, I'll do the thing with you, or I'll just chat to you about it, or I'll give you some information? Time uh, is an important thing. Then maybe in a way I can be helpful to you. I mean, I'll get something done for you, you get something done for me. So okay. that's, that's probably the way of collaboration in, in my thoughts. And what do you do, by the way? I mean, we know so, Rosie does yeah, frozen I'm food. I'm a, a project manager for American Express. So, yeah, I, I do implement projects, new setups, uh, infrastructure-related setups, wherein we implement collaboration solutions. Uh, when I say collaboration, that is more towards network collaboration. I know, but this yeah. is the interesting word. Is now yeah. collaboration is more like a cyber thing. Yeah. Uh, and that's interesting, isn't it? Because we've got these collaboration tools, yet I would say to people, face-to-face -face always wins over, but it takes time, energy, money. And it's interesting because you work in what I would describe as a real job for a real company. You can say that. And <laughs> how do you make yourself give favors, if you like, to others, help them out so they might help you later? Do you, are you visible? So I would say... Like, at this time, I might be having some time, and I can reach out to my folks that, okay, I see this project is critical for you. Is there a way I can be helpful to you? I have time at this time. Tomorrow, I'm crazy busy, and I see this person is having a bit 
less things in his plate and I would love to go to him and say, hey buddy, can you please help me with this? Okay. If he does it, I'll feel that my collaboration with him is successful. Okay, and you said you see somebody. Do you actually physically see people and they see you? you so, see I mean, we can easily make it out, you know, if people are having time or not, because they'll probably be hanging around if just they don't have <laughs> work. Okay, so we're we getting the idea out. of people just hanging around American yeah. Express. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Just smoking dope. <laughs> Got any plans? <laughs> you know, whatever, let's curve away, uh, no, no, no. No, that's not that's right. Not okay. True, yeah. Thank you. Amy, round of applause. And there's your Thank Neil Malarkey you. pen. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So, does anyone know what nominative determinism is? It, it means your name determines your job. So, Amy works for American Express. Isn't that marvellous? So, collaboration, we've heard about this. We think it's marvellous, actually. Well, what are the shadow sides of it? I'm too busy to take this on. I need some help. You're busy. How do we allot our time? And what about leadership? And what's the fact of collaboration right at the top? They found, for example, that fashion houses who had co-heads weren't deemed to be as successful. Himalayan expeditions, where there was a co-leadership, there were more deaths. So, of course, leadership shouldn't be collaborative, should it? You might say to me that, well, not everything is like fashion, not everything is like climbing the mountains, and also surely a leader's role is to make decisions, also to model collaboration. So there's this kind of dynamic, which is how much do I be seen to be making my own way and how much am I sharing with others? And I think that's tricky because nowadays we have so much more should we say, demand and tools to collaborate. So that's why you can't go and hide in a corner so easily, physically or digitally. So collaboration, people think, is the same as consensus. It's not. Uh, I, I've, I've seen an NGO person uh, say, we collaborated with organizations, we wouldn't share all their values. But for this project, we did agree. So consensus often, what's the thing that we least like? Anyone think about something in the news today that might be a bit like that? Collaboration, consensus can be the worst of all worlds or the least offensive. Collaboration is taking on a clear target. Let's work on this, perhaps. Um, people often say to me they collaborated in things that weren't actually their job. The, the, the company off-site, the day where they went out to do a charity thing, to help at a local charity, some CSR, uh, something that was the, somebody's Christmas party, whatever. Often the collaboration is easy when it's not the actual job, when it's not the real thing. But of course the fact is, and that's where complex problem solving I noticed up there, a lot of issues in organizations are so complex that you have to buy in, get buy in, ask for help across disciplines, ideas, people, different resources people have to share. So co-production is the name of the game. But the problem is meetings. So. Nowadays, people spend apparently 80% of the time in meetings or answering colleagues' requests. As I say, Dropbox found an answer to that, which is cut the number of meetings for two weeks and see which mattered. But there, the bad side of this is bottlenecks, employee burnout, and of course, many incentive schemes don't incentivize collaboration, they incentivize individual targets. So how do we make collaboration worthwhile? And it seems to me that the interesting piece of information. The panel is an overlap of 50% between the top collaborators and the top performers. 50%. Interestingly, though, remember I talked about the go-to givers, but what about those stay-away Sams that she or he is the one you just don't go to her, don't go to him, he won't help. He, she is that type of person. But 20% of organizational stars don't help others at all. So are there people who are best in that environment? Or can we harness their abilities, or is it just we just recognize that it's an uneven playing field? There was a Huffington Post survey, 2013. They found that men are 36% more likely to share knowledge, information, expertise. That's number one, the informational collaboration. Women were 66% more likely to assist others in need uh, in terms of giving more time and energy. And it was interesting that uh, a New York University survey found, they, they did an experiment, they found that a man staying late to help earned 14% higher ratings than a woman who did the same. 14%. But when neither the man or the woman helped, 
the woman was rated 12% lower than the man. Isn't this staggering that somehow it's expected different genders will behave in different ways? So the problem comes when it's this informal collaboration. People begin to find that they're being asked to collaborate. They can't say no. So perhaps leadership is as much anything as organizing the collaboration, eliminating some work, distributing the work, making sure that the collaboration is to a good end. Uh, so this article in the Harvard Business Review said, why not have a chief collaboration officer? Her job, his job, is to make sure collaborations are helpful and useful rather than just adding to our burden. And are they helping the right person? Is that person who's not a great collaborator? Are they best working in a different way? So I said I came from the world of improv. I'm going to tell you how we use yes and. We use yes and as a metaphor and as an actual drill, because we think saying yes and as opposed to yes but is more generative, will create more and better ideas. Of course, sometimes by saying yes and to lots of, lots of requests, you're saying no to the future requests. But it feels like we should have a go, a little exercise. Amelia, Amy, Sammy, do you want to come play? Ian, give them a round of applause. Uh, it'd be great if you had a few more. Anybody else want to play? You know there's a Neil Malarkey pen to be, to be had. No, you can get another one. Um, okay, thank you. Who's this gentleman? Jed. Jed? James. James, right. Thank you. Big round of applause to James. Okay. So come here. So this idea of yes and. Has anyone ever played yes and in workshops or whatever? Yes and is the idea of improv because... It's basically saying, yes, I hear what you say, and I build on it. It doesn't mean you actually say the words yes and always, but imagine that an improv scene. Hello, James. Hello. Do you know Amy? I do now. Do, do you love Amy? Uh, he doesn't let me call him Amy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yet. Yet. We'll come to that soon. So in improv, we might ask the audience for a suggestion, and the audience might say hospital. Then two actors have to create a scene, and we might say, one might say, good morning, doctor, and the other person might say, good morning, nurse. And we talk about the idea of an offer. The offer was doctor, the offer was nurse. Anyone come across this concept? Very simple. Actually, improv started with a social worker in Chicago in the 1920s, Viola Spolin. She was helping children, non-native speakers in inner city Chicago in the 1920s to feel more confident, to speak up in class. And her son said, these exercises are great. They work as a form of theater in their own right. So by 1959, he had created Second City Theatre Company. Has anyone ever been to Chicago or heard of Second City? I'd heard of Second City because I loved the Blues Brothers. And I'd heard of Saturday Night Live. Many alumni go on to Saturday Night Live. Mike Myers had come from Second City, Canada, when I met him in 1985. And we formed the Comedy Store Players, and that's why we're in the Guinness Book of Records. We're, apart from Mike, we're pretty much the same people who started 85, 86, still doing the show. So we're the longest running comedy troupe in the world with the same core cast. So there we are, hurrah. And uh, I didn't know Amy was going to tell you that, but anyway, I thought I should clear that up. In fact, in fact you thought it was something else, like eating the most donuts or something, but I'm in a group that's been around for 33 years. So Mike told me about improv. I didn't believe it. I thought they had cheated. No, he said there's a whole ethos and rule one of improv is to listen, treat what the other person says as an offer. An offer is something somebody gives you can do something with. A very interesting collaborative idea. Good morning, doctor. And this person then might build, not by saying good morning, nurse, they might say, um, good morning, Mr. Johnson. So I'm given the offer of patient. Um, I see your leg is better. Giving the offer of leg. Then this person, because in improv, our job is to make our partner look good. How can I make her have a good time? Not can I win at her expense, so I go, yes, my leg is better, and I'm playing football again. Then my job is to make my partner look good. Football, yes, and I heard you scored three goals at the weekend. You see how we go one step at a time. We're not prejudging. We're not trying to go three steps ahead of our partner. We're trying to make him, her, look good. However, compare that with this. Good morning, doctor. This person says, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> we call that a block. Has anyone experienced a block at work or at home? Your wife, Amy? No, 
Yes, Bart. Uh, of course, they don't mean to be nasty, cruel, whatever. It's just they see the world differently. But actually, uh, a friend of mine wrote a book called Everything is an Offer. Robert Poynton, P-O-Y, Poynton. Everything is an offer. There's always something happening. Your colleague in the market, in technology, how can I use this to go forward? So that's the interesting thing. You start at point A, point B moves even as you try to find it in improv. You can see why improv is a great metaphor for organizations, because point B changes. So, good morning, doctor. I'm not a doctor. I've got to go, yes, Anne. My job is still to make my partner look good. I've still got to work with what she, he gives me. Uh, what can I do? Good morning, doctor. I'm not a doctor. Oh, really? Well, I'm not a patient either. I come here to the hospital every day just to hang out. I see you in your white coat. So I've taken the offer of I'm not what I appear to be and made my partner right. How often are we listening to our colleagues but wanting to show that we're better than them? They're wrong. Or they've got a cold? Well, we've got a Malaysian flu. <laughs> the humble brag. So that's what it is. So yes and. So why do you give us over here the first line of a story? The dog, the dog ate my homework. So you have to go yes and, okay? So you add an offer. So the dog ate my homework. Yes, and he had a big grin on his little doggy face. I should get the mic. What have I done with the mic? Have I given it back, given it back to somebody? <laughs> what have I done with it? It's over there, right. Give me a round of applause to cover this. But I think you could hear James, couldn't you, nonetheless? He has a good voice. James, are you from show business? <laughs> are you an actor? Oh. No. no, OK. The dog ate my homework. Yes, and he had a wonderful grin on his little doggy face. Didn't you give him proper food last night? <laughs> good, but you could have said yes and. Yes, Anne. <laughs> yes, and we didn't give him proper food last night. Yes, and he's a hungry, hungry dog. Yes, and I wish my dog was hungry too. Yes, and actually my friend's dog did his homework for him. <laughs> okay, well done, Amy. That was particularly good from you. <laughs> Another version of this, and you can try this with your colleagues, is to do... That's good because. That's good because. So just give me a very simple, easy sentence. Anything. Pardon? The sun is shining. Okay, we'll go from this end. Uh, so it goes, the sun is shining. That's good because. Okay? The sun is shining. That's good because I'm due to take my dog for a walk. <laughs> and the dog definitely needs to go to the toilet. Say, that's good because. And that's good because the dog definitely needs to go to the toilet. And that's good because I have some time to take my kid out for a stroll. And that's good because my kid loves watching the dog go to the toilet. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So it's got a bit in common. Have you come across uh, De Bono's thinking hats? There are six ones. This is kind of, I think it's the green one, isn't it, where everything goes, you think of good ideas. I did this once with an oil firm, and they said, oh, well, there's just too much yes and in our organization. We never get down to real decisions. Interestingly, so sometimes is leadership saying yes, but. So, James, you can stay with the next one. So off you go, you three, give them a round of applause. <laughs> so we're going to play a game which is a two-hander, yes, and, because I think there's a mathematical equation which is the number of people involved makes it more difficult to collaborate. I don't know what the ratio is. It may be a similar ratio to how slow people are to come back after a meal break. Because if it's five of you, it's quite easy. If it's 50, it's relative. 500 is almost impossible. Because we don't reach the tipping point, isn't it? I, there should be a maths or physics PhD on this. So we're going to play the game yes and. OK? Similar idea. Yes and. OK, so give me an opening line or uh, an offer, actually, to start. We always try and start our improv scenes with something bold. So just give me a, an occupation. Give me an occupation, please. A job. What's that? A Brighton Town Councillor. OK, did you feel that sort of venom? 
a Brighton town councillor. Okay, James, do you live in Brighton? No, okay, so we may get this horribly wrong. So why don't you start with, um, I'm very excited about the, pro about the, uh, the project by the peer. That can be your opening line. Okay. We always try and start our improv scenes with something positive and something bold. How many of your meetings start with, oh, this is a bit rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> and then the energy goes down, so we try and create some up energy. So what was the first line again? I'm very excited by the project by the peer. Okay, let's go. We're two town councillors. I'm very excited by the project by the peer. Yes, and I feel encouraged lots of young people to find work. Yes, especially those immigrants. We love them in Brighton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we welcome people from all over the world. Yes, especially when they come bearing gifts. Yes, and we've had an influx of people bringing cordial frozen foods <laughs> and luxury ethical items. Yes, and that is a party waiting to happen. <laughs> yes, and that's it. We could have a party there, invite all the people who feel disadvantaged and get these so-called ethical people to sponsor it. Yes, and then Brighton will be a mecca. Can Brighton be a mecca? Is that okay, mixing? Yes, yeah. and <laughs> that's why I think I should be the leader of the town council. Yes, and I would vote for you. Yes. And thank you very much. I, uh, I'm glad I can count on your vote. I'm sure you can persuade Phil as well. Yes, Phil. <laughs> vote for Neil. He's my hero. <laughs> yes, and the problem is Phil doesn't like me. He wants to be the, count, the, the mayor as well, the leader. Uh, but I think you'll find that Phil has good days and bad days. On his bad days, he wants to be leader. On his good days, he wants you to be the leader, Neil. <laughs> yes, and thank you very much. Round of applause. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. By the way, James, I've asked everyone else, what is it you do in real life? Uh, I work with Rosie. Okay, so uh, Rosie Frozen Rosie, Foods. Rosie, we work for a company called Cook. We make nice frozen Oh, Cook, food. we've heard of Cook. Good, good, yeah. And um, what, do we, what, do you, what do you want, sales pitch? Um, Vouchers? <laughs> send me your email, just, I'll send you just, some free food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, um, <laughs> but what do you think you're going to get from today? Is your first time at Meaning? Uh, no, I came about four years ago. Oh, when I did my thing. Did you do yourself? I did it in 2014. Oh, I can't. My, I'm bad for dates. Short-term memory yeah, numbers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No you were great, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, Rosie, do you have to collaborate with James? Oh, don't ask. And, well, you have to collaborate with suppliers and distributors. Yeah, no, we have to collaborate. And how does that work? Uh, good, because uh, we try and make sure everything is a wonderful relationship in which we both win. But how do you do that? Just give them money? By off? being wonderful people and, and, and just by trying to get a genuine, honest... Um, that this is what we want to achieve together. Uh, we believe this is going to take us to a good place together, not just okay. in terms of us taking. Thank you, James. Thank you. Right. So, everyone raise your left hand, and you have to point to somebody nearby who isn't the person you came with. And she, he, is your partner. Okay, find her, him, now. Okay, so now's your chance to play yes and. So I think it'd be good if everyone stood up, don't you? Just, if you don't have a partner, wave hands at me, okay? Wave your hand and you'll find one. Okay, there's two ladies here, you have to mix. You can go with each other, that's fine. Okay, there's a gentleman here, there's, late, there's a gentleman there in the red. Can you find each other? In the red, go find one another. Anyone else? Doesn't have a partner? Okay, because it doesn't work as a threesome, honestly. So you're two, you're two people, you are two police officers. Two police officers, and I want you to say, I've arrested Wilkins again. Then it's yes and, yes and. Okay, off you go. Okay, let's, uh, let's pause for a second, and uh, why don't you sit down next to your new partner, if you, if you dare. So the two ladies at the front, you were laughing uproariously. <laughs> Just as a, an interesting thing, who found yes and difficult? 
Why? Because it's not how we speak, is it? Who wants to go yes and but? <laughs> yes and? Say again? Oh, Amy, not you again. So <laughs> you're working with James. Uh, who found that they got into a yes and where the other... You didn't want to go where they wanted you to go. <laughs> yes, but you can control it. A little bit like, I think, Amy talked about that area where I'm not quite sure it's going. I'm not sure where it'll lead, where it'll end up. I didn't know about the 45-day thing, did you? I didn't know that that record stood for any 45 days, Roger Bannister. Yeah. And yet he's got the fame. Because he broke through it and he found a way. Didn't think he was going to do it. And look how beat he was afterwards. But it's that thing. Yes, but means you tend to go what you already know. Yes, but I can see problems with this. And you might say, there are times I've got to say yes, but when something illegal is happening, when something dangerous is happening, or something you feel is not within the confines. But what about yes and? And what are the yes ands you can do? We can do lots of yes and in those moments of rapport, social, those networking things, those time when I just need to listen to you. I just need to be there for you. So the, the beautiful yes and, remember Poppy's story about the person who sat with her on the stones at the beach. The yes and was yes and you just need time. Yes and I'm here for you. And she said he held me in his hands sort of but didn't touch at all. It was one of those moments where you felt the exact response was to be silent just to check are you okay and be with you for those moments until you could move on. There were lots of yes ands from Richard uh, for example her boss when she said oh, I don't think I can do it I'm not qualified. Enough. Yes and we'll get your qualification. And you could see how she could run a business having done that MBA. Amazing, huge story she had there. Anyone else find themselves that yes and was a bit difficult? You want to go yes and but? Because I worked with one big consultancy and I said, oh, this guy, yeah, I've heard about your workshop, Neil. Yeah, you say, uh, you say yes and when you mean yes but? <laughs> yes and that's a bad idea. Yes and I don't like you. <laughs> As if it's a trick. It's not a trick but if you... If you think about the yes and ethos, it's about I'm accepting your offer. I'm building on it. And it may be I didn't go with what you expected because the offer is the unit of currency. For example, when I said, good morning, doctor, the offer was doctor, I lied. What are the offers in good morning, doctor? Good morning and doctor. Well done. Uh, good morning, doctor. Morning? Really? I've been up all night. Good morning, doctor. Good? It's terrible. I've killed three people already. <laughs> so this yes and isn't just acquiescence. It's fully getting in the moment with the other person. Those tiny moments of collaboration. Those tiny moments of meaning, actually, which I so enjoyed uh, what Mario said about those tiny moments of meaning. Sometimes it comes and goes. The week may be up, may be down. Meaning may be more diffuse. So there's tiny moments of yes and. So think about the people who see you as a yes but. It's people who are more yes but and they're worried about your yes anding too readily. Is that right? You're laughing. Is that who you've seen as? <laughs> okay. But it's true. Those of us who are naturally yes and might be frustrating to those who might want to go yes but it's a... I don't know where it's going to lead. So you need to yes and the offer of I need some safety here. So... That's what I talk about, really, the impact we have on one another. What are you yes ending? What are you yes butting? So, yes. Blimey, this is profound. Stand up, you know the drill. Stand up, say your words. What's your name? Uh, Peter. I'm just wondering about the, the yes bit of but, because it sounds as if it's actually a no. You're not really agreeing. So you're saying yes. Which seems like a no. Yes, you're going very deep there, Peter. Am I? The opposite of yes and is not yes but. The opposite, because if I, here. yeah, let me give you an example. If I say, let's paint the room blue, what's, what's the big yes to that? Let's paint the room blue, let's paint the whole house blue, let's paint Brighton blue, I'll paint myself blue. <laughs> I love you. I'll paint everything on my body blue. Okay? There's no end to the yes. What about there's no end to the no? Let's paint the room blue. No. <laughs> I don't like paint. I don't like blue. I don't like decorating. I don't like you. 
piss off. <laughs> but we don't always say those things, do we? So just for the exercise, yes, but, of course, is a no. If you want to go profound, no, but could be quite a big offer, though. No, but how about this? Or even yes, but how about this? It's almost the energy. That's why I go back to the offer. Yes and is almost one word in itself. We're yes anding you. Anyone know Tina Fey, by the way? Tina Fey of 30 Rock and Saturday Night Live, the first female head writer on Saturday Night Live. Lots of stories about her in that misogynistic world of comedy. I'm afraid it is. But she's got two pages on yes and in her book called Bossy Pants. Why wouldn't you say yes, she says. And you've got a responsibility to contribute. What's the and you're giving? So yes, but as an exercise, yes. It does, you can go yes, but down. You can go yes, but up. Mm. It's the idea of really listening. And in my book, I call it just listen and link. Can you link what you say to what the other person has said, what she cares about, what matters to her? Listen and link. Those are the, really what yes and is. You don't want to say yes and all the time. Am I listening really to what you're saying? Am I linking to what matters to you? That's what collaboration is. OK, I hope you found this amusing. I want to say a big thank you to my volunteer. Amelia, you're there. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, uh, Amy, of course. Thank you, Sammy. And thank you, James. Big round of applause for them. <laughs> so we, uh, we take a tea break now until 3.15. I'm going right now to my book stall, and I'll sign them for the chap who's trying to sell them. Otherwise, he's got to take them home on his own. So uh, <laughs> see you at 3.15. Thank you. <laughs>